you this mystery we are celebrating today. Jesus, the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus, the living bread that came down from heaven. Our Christian journey is a long one. It's a process. And as Christians, we are on a journey. We are on a journey. Every day of our lives as Christians, as Catholics, we must keep in mind one thing, that this is not a permanent place for you and me. It's not a permanent place for you and me. Therefore, we are on a journey. And this journey is not a one-day journey. It's not a one-month journey. It's not a one-year journey. But it's a journey that we take the whole of our lives here on earth. That is why last Sunday, if you remember in the first reading, Elijah, to a point, went to the wilderness. He was tired. He gave up. Imagine Elijah that in chapter 18 of First Kings, God gave him power to destroy almost 450 prophets of Baal. Elijah did the miracle before them, and he was alone. He was the only one, but God gave him the power. And last Sunday, in 1 Kings chapter 19, we saw, we heard that prophet Elijah went to the bush, to the wilderness, and was praying to God that God should take his life. He will no longer continue with the journey because he saw that the journey was too long for him. And for us as Christians too, the journey is long. But what happened? God gave him cake to eat. God gave him food to eat. Because God is telling you and me that our journey on earth is a long journey. And in the gospel of last Sunday, Jesus, being aware of how long the journey is, gave us his own body and blood to eat and drink, because the journey is long. Without him, we cannot complete this journey. And in today's first reading, the book of Proverbs is personified as a woman, as a woman. What does it mean for us to understand the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is the word of God that we Christians should have in us. That is why we are told that the woman prepare a food for the people. And this food is not for the worthy, it's not for the rich, but it's for the poor and the ignorant. This food we see in the gospel that Jesus is now telling us that he is the bread of life that came down from heaven for us to eat because our journey as Christians is long and we need food that will take us throughout this journey. Jesus Christ is aware of who he is and he's aware of our own journey. But something happened. Then the Jews, they became confused. Or among them, they were divided. How can this man is telling us that he is the bread of life? He came down from heaven. The person we know, Jesus, the son of Joseph, his mother is Mary. He's here with us. We saw him growing up. 
But they forget one thing. They forget to make a lift of faith. To see Jesus in a different way. To make a spiritual journey with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was not speaking to them as the same Jesus that they know that was growing up among them. But this time, Jesus has become somebody who is giving himself for you and me as our spiritual food. That is why in a mass, when we finish the first part, which is the word of God, then we enter the second part, which is the liturgy of the Eucharist. Because when we come, Jesus Christ will prepare us, feed us to go back and continue on our journey. Because without food, this journey will not be completed. Our journey is not a physical journey. Our journey is not the journey that we eat the food that human beings we give or we prepare. But it's a journey that we need a food that is spiritual, that Jesus Christ will give you and me, that will lead us, will take us for this journey throughout our life here on earth. And when Jesus told the Jews that I am the living bread, they failed to understand and we ourselves, as Christians, as Catholics, we must understand this in the spiritual aspect that the food, the bread and wine we see here is transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ for our spiritual food, for our journey that we are going to make here on earth. When we are able to understand that what is bring on the table is not ordinary bread and wine, when the priest we say the prayer of consecration, then at that time we understand that our spiritual journey on earth, our journey as Christians is being nourished by this food that Jesus Christ himself will give. What is that thing that is stopping you, that is hindering you as Christians, as Catholics, from participating, partaking in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. How are you going to make this journey as a Christian to the end if you are not partaking in the body and blood of Jesus Christ? It's a question that we have to ask ourselves anyone who is not receiving the body of Christ? What is that thing that is hindering you? What is that thing that is stopping you from making it possible to be part of those or among those who are participating, eating the body and blood of Jesus Christ? Because he says that whoever eats and drinks my blood eat my body and drink my blood, we have eternal life. But those who are not eating and drinking his blood and eating his body will not have eternal life. What is that thing that is stopping you to be part of those that will inherit the eternal life? Ask yourself. Make it possible Find a way to be part of those who are prepared for this journey, who are prepared to receive Jesus Christ, that we guide them, that we lead them, that we take them on this our journey of Christianity here on earth. If Jesus Christ is counting those who are eating his body and drinking his blood, are you going to be part? If you're not, what is that thing that is stopping you? That is why in the second reading, St. Paul wrote to Christians 
in Ephesus. Ephesus was a great city, one of the biggest cities in the Roman world. And they had a temple there that they were worshiping, idols. And when Paul went there to evangelize, he came back and discovered that if I leave these people to continue being the way they were, they will go back to their former ways. So St. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, the Christians in Ephesus, which was form of the Jews and the Gentiles, to strengthen them, telling them, don't be foolish to go back to your old ways, but embrace Christ. Receive Christ in you. Keep on doing what God has instructed you to do, what I taught you to do. Continue doing it. Be wise. Grow in wisdom and understanding the precepts of God. And don't remain or don't go back to your former ways. St. Paul is telling you I mean today that things are hard. Our world is getting tough and tougher every day. But are we going to leave Christ to look for other means to survive? St. Paul is telling us today, no matter how tough it is, let us remain in Christ that we have embraced. Let us remain steadfast in God, that God is the answer. God is the one who will give us redemption. God is the one who will salvage our situation. No matter what situation you are going through, in your family, in your place of work, in your business, God is the one who will bring solution to you. Not any other way. Don't look for another way. This is what St. Paul is encouraging the Christians in Ephesus. Not to go back to their old ways, but to remain steadfast in God. And God is the answer. He is the one. That is why he's giving us himself as our own food of life. Food that will give us eternal life. Not just a food that we eat and be satisfied, but a food that will lead us, will take us to eternal life. Let us pray and ask God to continue to give us the grace we need on our journey as he continue feeding us. Let us remain with him. Continue to participate in the food, in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. To continue guiding and strengthening us, giving us strength to continue on our journey of faith, our spiritual journey till we reach eternity. On the last day, we'll be part of those that we say we have made it because Jesus Christ is the one who accompanies us, who gives us his body, his blood to drink as food on our journey till the time of our departure here on earth because where we are living is not the last place for us. It's a temporal place for us. It's not a permanent place for us. But without this food, we will not be able to accomplish this journey. So our journey here on earth is a journey to remain with Jesus Christ. His body and blood is what we keep us, we take us. We pray that the good Lord will continue to guide and strengthen each and every one of us. That on our journey of faith, we will not deviate. We will not return back to our old ways as St. Paul encourages the Christians in Ephesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.